What's good? It's uh, Yamakara back with another Factorio series. Uh, in this Factorio series, we're going to be calling it After the Rocket. Um, and we're going to be discussing what uh, you do after you launch your first rocket. So, as you noticed, we launched a rocket at 7 hours and 49 minutes. I uh, had to redo a little bit to get it going. But uh, we'll continue, and we're not going to finish there. So you could finish, or you could keep your playthrough going. Um, in this playthrough, we are going to now discuss what we're going to do after the rocket. So first things first, we are going to resume science. So we did stop our science production. Um, and we are going to now continue it. We are going to turn the factory back on. So the rocket will be doing rocket things, and everything else is going to be sciencing as well for us. This one right here is going to be blue chips. Let's turn this whole factory back on. Um, and now we're going to pick what we're going to tech. Um, so we did go straight to the rocket, and we kind of skipped everything on the way. Um, accumulators is a good one. First one to go. And if we ever wanted to get space science. But I think getting a proper logistics bot set up, up and running, would be very powerful. But also getting a bit of train automation and defenses. Uh, right now, we actually don't have any proper defenses. Lasers are really good for outposting. Um, and so is a tank. We already actually automated the tank. We could get some better bullets as well. That might help. Um, and yeah, we'll just go from there. So we'll just keep the science going for a second. Turn the labs back on. And uh, continue from there. So now our labs are going. Science is reproduce, reproducing. Producing again. And we are going to... Build a tank. So one of the first things I would like to do is fix my power. My power is not good right now. It is uh, not holding on. Actually, we'll do this first. Um, my power is unacceptable, really, at the end of the day. Um, we do need more power, and we need it to produce a bit better. We'll do that instead. But I'm a little bit worried that the biters are going to attack me. So what I think we're going to do... Actually, what we're going to do is I'm going to build a tank, and we're going to go uh, kill some biters. So we tech the tank a while ago, but we never actually ended up building one. We have some solid fuel, and we'll also build some repair packs. While we're doing that, though, we're also going to be automating our solar panels. Solar panels, if I'm not mistaken, are copper, steel, and green circuits. I thought it was iron for some reason. I can maybe build them down here now. Solar is a good uh, in-between power before you get nuclear set up. Nuclear is really the best that you want. It uh, lasts forever. It produces so much power. And uh, yeah, you can just expand off it so quickly. Solar is good too, but solar takes a lot of time to set up. I guess it's not as bad with Spidertron anymore, but uh, it's still not a quick operation by any means. So I'm a big advocate of the nuclear power. We'll put the copper right there. And we shall continue this factory. So our local neighborhood bot friends should be building this for us. Your local neighborhood bots. And that can go like that, and that goes there. This actually doesn't work. That's too bad. I can do that instead. There we go. So now we have the steel coming. We have the copper. And then we just need the green chips here. We are going to need a lot of solar panels. And eventually in this base, we will get a rail setup going. If we're actually going to expand this factory through and through. So we do not have a proper mall set up in this factory. Mall set up being a area where everything is kind of built at once. Or built together. We don't have that. Uh, and it's not for lack of wanting it. It's just we never ended up building it. So one thing you can do when you build an item like this, an item that you're going to be using, is have it go on the bus side. So we have this like line area here, if you would. This is where we walk down. All our resources come down here. And if you make all your items build, like your belts built here and your 
uh, your splitter is built here and your inserter is built here and your assembler is built here and your solar panel is built here. Put all the items, not on the end down here, but put them up over in this area. Put them on the belt line. So when you walk down this belt line, you can just grab all the items. So you can grab your assemblers, you can grab your inserters, you can grab your belts, you can grab your splitters, you can grab your uh, accumulators, your solar panels, your everything. Is this kind of on this this area here? A lot of people will put a dedicated area with just the resource they want. But if you have everything kind of in this on this main belt line, when you walk back and forth, you can grab everything. So you will notice I tried to keep things down as opposed to up. And that's kind of why. It's a little bit of logic to that. A little bit. Not a lot. And then we'll build some accumulators here as well. And the accumulators are batteries and iron. So a little bit of thought goes a long way in uh, keeping your base a little more organized than not organized. A little bit. You don't have to get too carried away and bust out spreadsheets and all that. You can. There's definitely people who do that. But uh, your factory can work quite well without that. We do need the green chips here as well still. And the batteries are over here somewhere. Actually, they're over here. Actually, they're right here. Um. Hmm. Hmm. We could do this. I'm actually gonna shuffle that over like that. Why? Because it needs more iron plates than it needs copper. So if you look at the resource and X or the better, ah, it's wrong again. Wow. That's that twice in this factor I've done that mistake. I thought it demanded more of one resource than the other. I don't remember I did that with my uh, my speed modules, I think, the other day. I'm getting rusty, guys. I'm getting rusty. It's been too long since I played this game. And then we'll go up again, just like we were talking about. And our accumulators will be building up here. Solar panels will let go to that size, and accumulators the same thing. We do have a uh, video on the nuclear, which also talks about the ratios for this. Uh, it's 21 to 25 for solar panels. If you do 1-1, one, one, it's almost close enough, and then people will be happy with you. 1-1 um, one, one is, uh, or 21, 25 is, you're getting pretty particular with your resources if you're going to do it like that. That goes there, and there we go. We got solar panels automated. Uh, we do have a tank. We're going to grab some ammo. Um, grenades are really good for killing biters, but we'll go over a di couple different strategies here on how we kill biters and how we expand the factory. We'll go over the most basic setups, and then we'll kind of move our way through. So right now we have ammo. We need some more grenades. Grenades aren't chested, so let's grab them like this. It's a lot of grenades there. Put the grenades there, and we'll grab a few more turrets. Look at the copper. The copper still cannot keep up. Power is also fluctuating on us, and we did know that. Um, we're building solar panels. They're starting to accumulate. We do have this setup right here that could have eight more. So maybe we'll do that first before we head out. So we got eight more of those, and then we just need... Uh, 16 more steam engines? 16, yeah. Math is hard. I go back to school in a few weeks um, so I can get smart again. Again. It's like implying I got smart before, but... That should be fun, depending on when you watch this video. Back to school for architecture. Got to grab some solid fuel here as well. Actually, grab some rocket fuel. Rocket fuel. And we'll go talk about the different fuel types right now for two seconds while I'm grabbing fuel. So, you have multiple different types of fuel. You have solid fuel. You have rocket fuel. You have coal. You have wood. Um, and these all power your vehicles in different ways. So, if you hover over it, it says a fuel value. So, it just says a fuel value of four megajoules. And then if we go hover over our solid fuel, which did I grab any of that? 
has a fuel value of 12 megajoules, but it also has a vehicle acceleration. So it makes your vehicle actually go faster. And it gives your vehicle a top speed of 105. So it makes your vehicle accelerate faster, which is huge. And it also makes your vehicle drive faster through and through. So you have your basic fuel and your wood is the exact same as coal. It doesn't have any bonuses. It just has a burn value. Then you have your solid fuel. Then you have your rocket fuel right here, which is 100 megajoules. So that is quite a bit more potent than the four for coal. And it has a vehicle acceleration of 180% and a top speed of 115. Uh, nuclear fuel, which you can build right here, uh, has a fuel value of 1.2 gigajoules, a vehicle acceleration of 250%, but the top speed is the same as rocket fuel. So when people set these up with their trains using rocket fuel or nuclear fuel, it's not really a huge issue one way or the other, because once the vehicle accelerates, the top speed remains the same and the vehicle's only accelerating when it starts. To when it stops and then it goes again right so i am not a huge advocate of using nuclear fuel for my trains i find rocket is good enough and rocket is generally what i use and i am happy with that rocket gets the job done rocket gets the job done i'm pretty sure we have biter evolution on right now which is moderately annoying but it is what it is i'm actually gonna grab a car too just to show the strategy for fighting these dudes. Now, when you drive your tank in your base, be a little bit careful. You don't run over your entire factory, because that is a thing. The tank will run over a lot of things. It has the power. I need just a bit of iron here. We're going to build a car. We'll also grab some coal. So we'll show the basic fighting techniques going through and through the factory. So the first thing I really, really want to do, well, the first thing we did was we turned the factory back on because we turned it off to get the achievement. The second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to build more. And in order to build more, you need a good, stable power source first. And then once you get your power source, you can start expanding the factory quite a bit. But without those two things, your factory is just going to kind of hang out. So we are going to first... Kill some biters. Uh, they've been spreading up here. Tab to change your ammo type. C to attack. Fish to eat. So the tank is my preferred way. We don't have tank shells. Tank shells do a lot of damage and they're pretty good. Um, but we have a car right now. So what you can do when you start fighting your first biters is I like to do something like this. So we have a bunch of turrets here, and they are not within range of the nests, obviously. You can tell that. And then I'll grab my car, wherever my car went. It didn't go anywhere because we didn't build it. Okay, so this is your first ever biter fighting strategy. You, well, I guess your first one could be walking over and shooting. Now I'm gonna grab my car, and I'm gonna grab grenades. I don't really like to fight the biters until I get grenades. That's really the first way of fighting them. And then we do something like this. We're going to drive around. And we're using coal here. And we're just going to do circles around their, fa their, their factory. Their uh, little house here. Now, some setups are a lot easier to kill than others. This is not bad because we can drive freely here. This is quite a few grenades. But it works really, really well. And now you wonder why I set that up there. So that's set up here for this reason. When the biters are chasing and you need to repair because you're dying, you can just go behind your line and repair peacefully. You don't have to drive away from them. You don't have to outrun them. You can just go down to your turret line there. So I like to always have a kind of a defensive backing line, something like that. That really, really, really helps you deal with these guys. And if you get in trouble, you can just kind of drive back to your base. You can drive over them. That is a thing. You can ram it. But that's a bit harder. So that's strategy number one for fighting the biters. Uh, I Again, I don't like to fight the biters with just a gun. Walking over and shooting. Especially not a pistol. You definitely want a real gun. 
I find it's a waste of your time. Wait till you get the car, and then you can just drive circles around their base, and just pick these up. And move on to the next colony. Now, you also notice another thing we didn't do, is I didn't kill the worms. The worms are actually no threat to you. Um, so when biters send out a scouting colony, or a scouting expansion base, they move from the spawners. They do not move from the worm. So these worms sitting here, they'll never do anything again. They can eat all the pollution they want. No biter will ever spawn from these worms. They'll just hang out and nothing will ever happen here. Unless I walk near it again and it shoots me. It's just going to stay four worms hanging out forever. Happily, happily. Uh, even if you have a train to drive by, they won't shoot the train unless you're in the train. So, worms, not really a problem. Now we have the tank. The tank is the fun way of doing this. Generally, again, I would set up a wall of turrets. It's a bit risky without the wall of turrets because you need somewhere to fall back on. This kind of keeps you alive. So we set our turrets up like that. And then we go back into our tank, which is driving away from me. And at the tank, you can use the machine gun or you can just use the tank. I like to use the tank in all its glorious fashion. The tank itself is a weapon. You can just run them over. Now that's one of the big problems of fighting in a vehicle. Is a cliff like that. You hit the cliff and you go to a dead stop. It's very, very, very dangerous. So fighting around water and cliffs is your mortal enemy. So take care when you fight near water and cliffs. And again, we just run them over. If you're at full speed with rocket fuel, you will just ram the, the, the spawner down. And then we just bring them all back to our little gauntlet wall here. If you do not kill these guys, they are going to run back to the nearest spawner. They won't hang out the worm. They'll go back to a spawner. They won't make an expansion base here. They'll just leave. And it's that easy. These are pretty small biter colonies. So not really a huge problem, but... Uh, just know that's how they work. Easy. Easy biter fighting. So cliffs and water are your mortal enemy. When you're killing biters and vehicles. And right here. Not even a shot fired. The good part about that is it saves a lot of ammo. <laughs> and you just run them over. And just make sure you don't run out of fuel. It's definitely happened once or twice to me. Driving around and you run out of fuel. And you just ram them down. And you notice when that spit stuff hits you, it slows you down a lot. Your vehicle's a slower acceleration rate. So that's why when you drive in circles with the car, it really helps. Because these guys are doing predictive fire. And they can't hit you with their predictive fire because they, you're always turning. They don't predict the turn. So doing the full 360 circles around their base really, really, really works very well. Fighting biters. And now we're just going to do a little patrol around here. See what we got around the base. See if we have any more expansion groups here. I don't think we do, though. I think that was a... I'm trying to drink a coffee and play. That's really hard to do. So we got nothing over here. Um, pollution is really spread over here, though. So over here is kind of contained. I don't see any more colonies. Got some uranium over here. Delicious uranium to build our nuclear with a lot more oil as well. A little tiny colony over here. We can just go run it down quickly. Again, I don't care about the worms. I only care about the biters. And then we kind of do a little weave technique there. And even these guys, I don't really care about them. They'll never catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. And then we just drive away. Exploring the map and securing our area. Now we do have expansion on, so they will eventually spread out here again. So you're going to want to eventually turret it all up. Wall your base in with turrets. Otherwise, eventually they'll attack you. Unless you get artillery turrets. And that's another... That's a problem for another day. It's a, a little bit of science away from us. Well, they look like they're expanding really slowly, so it's not a 
Not a big problem right now. I might, uh, we'll kill those guys too. We're going to probably want that iron. And then we'll head back to our base. Um, I meant to press five, not four. <laughs> Hotkeys, love it. And we'll just repair this guy up. We're still teching. Science is sciencing. Let's go. Let's see what they got. What do you have? So you can weaken it first, too, with your uh, machine gun. That does help. And we'll just kill a few of them. And there we go. This is kind of up area over here is secured. Ish. As secure as we need it to be. And again, with the predictive firing, you just kind of weave and they can't really hit you. Better in the car, obviously, because the car is faster. But... And then the cliffs. Stay away from those cliffs. They're your mortal enemy. Now we're going to go check out what our pollution cloud on the right side of our base is doing. The east side, I guess you could say. So we'll check out the east, and then uh, by that point, we should have made some solar panels. We can place some power down. Solar is my favorite power in Factorio. It's what you would call a set-and-forget power system. Um, you build it once, and you never, ever, ever have to look at it again. It's just, it's always there. Uh, it's it's beautiful like that. You got the night and day cycle, but that's why you build the accumulator solar power ratio of 21 to 25, um, or 20 to 25 is good enough too. Not quite perfect, but whatever, close enough. Um, it just it's always producing power, and it's so nice that you never have to worry that your coal out runs out, your uranium runs out, you mess something up with your nuclear. It's just it's just always going. Um, nothing better than that. I have tried to run a mega factory off of only steam power. It's uh, mm, I would I would use the word it's a nightmare. It's uses a lot of power to get everything going because you need the burner drills or the mining drills and everything to power that up. Even with rocket fuel, it was uh, it was a it was a debacle, I guess you could say. So, do I recommend that? Uh, definitely not. The pollution must almost have been hitting these guys right now. Got him. We have the big biters now, so it is, uh... They are a kind of a threat here. And again, do not hit cliffs. Cliffs bad. They'll put your tank into a full stop. It doesn't take damage, but it does do a full stop. And they'll just chase me forever. Oh, the pollution was just on the edge of hitting these guys. Wow. So we need the spawner out. I don't care about the worms. Kind of nice to kill them, but... He gets to live to fight another day. Maybe not. Drive by. I'm just trying to kill what the pollution is going to be hitting soon. Uh, I do need a repair before I go there. And now this is where that actual having set up turrets is really nice. Because when these guys keep chasing you like this. You can just do that, and you have a little safe base to repair yourself. The pollution's not quite there yet, but it is over there. I'm actually surprised we didn't get attacked yet. We must have been 10, 15 minutes away from getting attacked. We'll leave that there, and we'll pull them into it. You are starting to see some bigger colonies out here, regardless of... Uh, your settings. And it becomes a little less feasible to drive in like a madman. You can get caught and you can die. So you do strafing runs, I guess you could say, on the biters. 
So you gotta park your tank, repair your tank, and then do another drive-by. This is where it's a little more important to have a proper, uh, proper fallback, I guess you could say. Pick those guys up. Because we should be able to kill the last spawners here on this run. And then we'll be abandoning this area. There we go. Don't need to keep fighting forever. We can uh, leave it now. The pollution will spread kind of in a degree like line like that, not straight up that way. So it took a long time for the pollution to hit that guy. Especially with our environmentally friendly power about the place. Environmentally friendly power. Got him. Four spawners, not too bad. So you're always trying to turn. Dodge him, dodge him. Got a nice little forest there. That's getting to the size that you might want to place some turrets down. And it becomes less feasible to just ram the colonies. So we managed to get them down there. And then we just drive away. They'll give up. They'll give up one day. Just don't stop driving. Don't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Their pollution does go all the way down there. It's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. It's not even traveling over water. Hit another uranium field. Goodbye, my pollution absorbers. Ooh, look at that forest. That's a Canadian forest right there if I ever saw one. Nice and dense. I just want to make sure I'm not trying to go too far away from our base. I got other things to do other than kill biters right now. We do want to start placing a little bit of that solar power down. A little bit, not a lot. Put some more ammo in there. So we just have a little bit right there that we got to kind of kill quickly. And then we can head back to the fa or down to the south side, clear that out and then uh, go back to the factory. Fighting biters. I see the red there, but I don't actually see them. There's a spawner hiding in here, it looks like. They're just worms. You can see them on the mini-map. But I can't actually see it. If you drive near it and there's no biters come out of it. You know, it's just all worms. Not a threat. Interesting. You don't see that too much. Where it spawns just uh just worms. And I guess we'll kill this group right here while we're here. Now it's getting on the leftovers from the other colonies that we didn't kill. You notice there's a lot of biters here. So let's spawn them, they ran back here and then uh we never killed them. So there's a lot more biters here than there should be. Now the next base over here we'll get a ton of biters so I'll just wander over that way when they give up chasing me ooh <laughs> thread the needle and now we're gonna go check the south side of the base here so while we're heading south we'll just see what the map has in store for us here and now we can deviate left Left we go. Now might be an opportunity to check the fuel lines. The fuel levels, we're still at 5, so that's okay. We start with 10. So fuel is still okay. Uh, 
I thought for a second there we could cross this lake, but looks like we might not be able to. Could go all the way south and see, but... With my past experience, these lakes can be very, very big, so we'll just uh, skirt it like this. Go, go, tank. Actually very neat to see the... Outside world exploring. I always love exploring in Factorio. Um, what do we want to tech next? Can we do portable solar and start getting our own personal roboports? We'll have that for our next session. Personal roboports. This guy here is... This is, this is what you really want. That and the MK2 armor. Where is the MK2 armor hiding? This guy here. Beautiful. Needs these efficiency modules. This is a nice forest. This is why we're not in a car right now. Car's a little bit faster to get around, but you can't get through the forest like that. The tank's just uh, gets a little plow on the front of it. And you just plow right through. Beautiful. So we want to clear over here and see what we're dealing with. Just to ensure I don't lose stuff to biters, because it has happened. I've definitely lost entire sections of factories to biters, not paying attention. Not walling it off properly like this. So we're doing the proactive setup defense, as opposed to the reactive. We'd rather kill them first, versus have them expand into my base and kill me. And then eventually we should have artillery. The ultimate biter defense. That's, yeah, we're a ways away from that still. I'm not worried about that guy. We'll just see what we have out here, but this forest is going to absorb so much of the pollution that south I don't think will be a problem anytime soon. Love me a good forest. One thing I wish this game had, that I'm actually not sure why it's not part of vanilla, is planting trees. There's a few things in this game that I would like to have added, and planting trees, I feel, is one of them. I'm really not sure, between me and you, why it's not a feature of Factorio. You can destroy the trees, but you should be able to replant them. But otherwise, yeah, this game, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. We got some more iron down there. Okay. I think we're good here. So now we've explored our pollution cloud. We now know what's around us. So that would be my first step once you launch your rocket is to explore around your factory and see what you have, what you're dealing with. So are you playing on a rail world where you totally need to set up a rail infrastructure? Are you playing on a ribbon world where you got to expand and take over some more resources or you're playing on an island where you want to conquer it uh you just need to kind of know what's around you in order to how you're going to position and poise yourself for the future for us it was having no defenses this is the easiest way we just kind of have some very rudimentary defenses so we got to take a proactive attempt at uh, pushing the biters out of the way and we have now done that and now we got to do the next step. So the next step is now powering your factory because you should have unlocked beacons at this point. Or you should be thinking about unlocking beacons. And beacons are going to destroy your power grid. And when I mean destroy, they are going to destroy your power grid. It's, it's beautiful how bad they are. So we need to place eight more of these down. Six, seven... I don't think we can fuel that one there. Six, seven, eight. We'll put it underground here just so we can get in between. We stagger them so we can put a water pipe in between or a steam pipe in between and a power line. There's multiple ways you can stagger this building, but this one works okay. <clears throat> I don't have any inserters on me. Because who comes prepared to these things, right? I 
actually don't need underground. I can just go around it. Just go around it. All that work for one extra steam turbine. Just enough power lines. Beautiful. And by just enough, I mean one off. And we need one more of these guys, which I don't have anymore. So there we go. The power grid should be fine. This should be 20. 20 of those and 40 of those. Well, 39 because... Can't do things perfectly around here. That would confuse everybody. <clears throat> and now we're going to grab some of our solar panels. We're going to do a little miniature solar panel setup. We should have a, a reasonable amount built. Grab some of these. It's another thing we should just automate right now. Power lines. Power lines a very needed item. Obviously. Can of automation without power. So I vote that we place it right here. <laughs> and by right here, I mean right there. So this is going to be sticks. Right in the center of the factory. And then the other one will be right here. Right there. This will be our power lines. It's going to grab backwards right there. You're going to go there. And we're going to grab this right there. And then we'll put our passive provider chest right there. I like how the power building has no power. We're going to make it uh, that many. A lot. That's a nice little setup. It's a super needed building, so it's fine to be right in the middle. I have no issues with that. Uh, we have 500 solar panels. Okay. That's actually more than I thought it was going to build. We are right now getting rid of these, putting them into our logistics trash by control clicking them. Um, we can do that with the belts too. Get rid of all those. Ammo doesn't want to go in there. So we got to click it in manually. <clears throat> so our accumulators weren't backing up because... <laughs> because we didn't have power to the inserter there. So the accumulators have been... Uh, we have a lackluster supply of accumulators, I guess you could say. But we'll get more. 50 solar panels. This many solar panels will really power a factory for a long time. <clears throat> Just don't have the accumulators yet. So now the next thing you want to do is build them, really. could do a, a rudimentary setup for that and then you're gonna want to get some robo ports down so you can automate the building of them so while we're hanging out I'm gonna get two robo ports going and then we're well on to our first phase activity of after the rocket and I think the first thing you should be doing is securing your base uh, getting your science turned back on, if you turned it off. And getting ready to outpost and expand. So our first thing for expansion is going to be beacons. Um, and we can't get beacons without power, because we'll just murder our power grid. So, because we're going to do that, we need to place down our solar somewhere. And we want to place it out of the way. You don't want to place it in your factory, because you're going to need a lot of solar panels. So we can place that guy right there. Place you there. This is not really out of the way, but we're going to keep this in the logistics network. And now here comes your first tip on bots. When placing your logistics networks, be mindful of how far away 
these gaps are. So my bots are probably going to come from here and try and get there, and they're going to try and cross. And if it's too far of a crossing, they'll go all the way here and they'll back. So otherwise, they'll go like this and go really slow because they lose their power and go there. Or they'll go this far over and they'll go backwards, and then they'll just keep doing that. So when you have a big gap like this, you need to have Roboports in the middle too. And this is where it becomes beneficial to have smaller Roboport setups. So if you're going to have a defensive network, put your defensive network on its own Roboport network. Don't have it on the main network. It becomes beneficial to have tiny, tiny, tiny networks everywhere. As opposed to beastly networks. So your first setup, you're going to place it by hand, and then you can start doing this and getting the bots to place it for you. But we need another Roboport because we're only half in range right now. So the bots will actually place the power lines here for me because they have power lines. Now, if you don't have power lines and you want the bots to bring you some power lines, do this. <laughs> so we don't have a requester chest. And we have no way of making the bots to just bring me an item like that. Well, I guess we have logistics bots. They'll do that. But if you want it somewhat reasonable manner, and you want a lot of them, and you're not sure your logistics bots are up to it, you can just do that. Construction bots will bring a whole bunch of those, and then we'll just manually remove them. Our bots should be coming. Yeah, here they come. So now you're wondering why we have no accumulators place right now. We're going to place the accumulators on the side. How many is this on the power side? We have 12 here. Twelve here. Grab that like that. If we had 10, it would be an easier ratio, but uh, 12, I guess, is is a number. Put those there. Another one like that. We can just place those down there. So one to one is almost good enough. Not quite, but it's not like all these power lines they brought me. Nice guys, eh? <laughs> it's uh, not how bots were intended to be used, but uh, it is a it is a strategy nonetheless. Placing our accumulators down. When they're flashing that red electric sign there, it means they don't have enough power. Or they're not connected to the grid. Because they're not going to be able to get power if they're not connected to the grid. Put those there. And the bots will place the rest for us. This uh, stamp I did, it didn't work. Didn't work because the top and the bottom don't mirror properly. If my top and bottom mirrored perfectly, it would be an easy stamp. So when you make a big stamp like this, just make sure your top and your bottom mirror perfectly. So if you were to grab it and stamp it on top of itself, you're not going to have a thousand power lines everywhere. Because if it's off center, you're going to start getting power lines like this, and then you have a power line there, and then you have a power line there. And remember, shift click to place on top of an item. You can click and hold, and it will place on the blueprint. So if we have a ghost place item like that, and you click and hold, it will place it on there. I don't think I ever went over that. So it won't just place items everywhere. Or you can just manually click it. And there we go. we got a little tiny solar field going. That's our first step on renewable power, because we need to save the planet. Hashtag planet Earth Day or something. <laughs> and then we got this right there. So we're now looking at, if you click on the power line, if we actually connected it to the grid, we have 200 solar panels, 100 accumulators. So we're actually exact opposite on our accumulator. We're upside down. So let's grab that, place them there. I don't want to go super far down. Right there. And then we're going to use the deconstruction planner to cancel those ones. And there we go. Now we should be about 100 and 100. Because this was 100 here. 
So now it'll be about a one to one ratio. Eh, it's close enough. And then what we can do with that setup is grab this and just paste that down like that. Rinse, repeat over and over and over and over again. We're a bit upside down though. So I'll place some more of these guys. So now I have this beautiful, beautiful stamp. And now you don't want to build this by hand. So what you do is you place a RoboPort in here. And you can remove the RoboPort after if you wanted to. Or leave the RoboPort in the stamp. So you're stamping RoboPorts down with your setup on it. So we have this. And then we stamp this next one down. We'll maybe leave a gap. And our current setup is 290 to 230. Which is not one-to-one -one in any way, shape, or form. Um, accumulators of solar panels, 2125. So we're super negative on solar panels. So this ratio is completely off, so we might have to tinker with that a little bit. But the thought that counts. Logistics spots are trying to take stuff from my inventory. We keep baiting them. They're like, I'm there. Nope, I'm there. Nope, I'm there. Nope. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll stop there for this video. Um, we've now secured the perimeter, which is the first thing. We have the science labs back up and running. And uh, our rockets are it's ready to launch again. But we don't have... Um, we don't have this researched. So sending another rocket up in space is actually a waste because we're not getting space science. So we're just going to stop the rocket for now until we have this built. And then we can start firing rockets up in air. But until we get that, you, there's no point continuing firing your rockets. So we'll stop there. So the first thing again, we secured a perimeter. And now we're getting a renewable power source going. And then after we get the renewable power source, we will start beaconing the crap out of this place. So I want to say thanks again for watching and uh, until next episode this is Yamakara. Ciao for now.